Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Barbecue Nation 1Q FY23 Post Results Analyst Conference Call hosted by Ambit Capital. As a reminder, all participants' lines will be in listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Vidisha Sheth from Ambit Capital. Thank you and over to you, ma'am. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the 1QFI23 earnings call of Barbecue Nation Hospitality Limited. From the management we have with us, Mr. Kayam Ganani, Managing Director, Mr. Rahul Agarwal, CEO and Holtime Director, and Mr. Anurag Mittal, Chief Financial Officer. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Kayam Ganani. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. A very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I take the pleasure in welcoming you to quarter one FY23 conference call of Barbecue Nation. Since the onset of COVID a couple of years back, this quarter was a fully normalized quarter. We are happy to report yet another remarkable performance at our company with our consolidated quarterly revenues crossing 300 crores for the first time in the history of Barbecue Nation. We reported highest ever revenue of 315 crores during this quarter, which is around 3x of previous year quarter one and 25.4% higher than the immediate preceding quarter. Despite a challenging inflationary environment, we managed to uh, we managed our gross margins well and achieved gross margins of about 66.8% during the quarter. This was driven by targeted efficiency projects, better cost management, calibrated price increase, and change in business mix towards dine-in. We also reported healthy EBITDA margins of 23.3%. We have clearly defined pillars of our growth, namely Barbecue Nation India, Delivery Segment, Toscano, and Barbecue Nation International. We are extremely focused on growing each of these four verticals to build one of the largest food service companies owing its restaurant brands. In our core segments of Barbecue Nation India dining business, we added nine new restaurants, taking the total India network to 176 numbers of restaurants. Our India business has grown well over last year and previous quarter, led by higher covers and higher realization per cover. We have a strong pipeline of under construction and under evaluation sites planned to cross 200 outlets of Barbecue Nation in India in this financial year. During this quarter, our dine-in to delivery mix has changed in favor of dine-in. We have witnessed a decline of around 6% in our delivery business as against the previous quarter. While our a la carte orders have continued to grow, our box orders have declined. Our delivery ratings have continued to improve with our focus on delivery business. We believe the business will stabilize at the current levels. Toscano business has grown by around 54% versus the previous quarter led by both dining growth and two new outlets added during the quarter. Toscano now has 13 restaurants across three cities and we plan to add around five more restaurants this year. Toscano delivers healthy store margins of 23% plus in this quarter. International business is the highest margin business in our portfolio, which store margins of over 25% plus. We have demonstrated sustained SSSG and profit growth over the last three years, and now are looking to add two to two, three restaurants this year. We are extremely focused in building and growing each of these four verticals and build one of the India's largest brands, owning food services company. We have always built this business with focus on our guests and employees. I'm proud to share that this year we were ranked seventh in the Great Place to Work survey. And we're also ranked among the top 10 retail companies to work for in India. With this now I hand over to Rahul to take you through the quarterly performance of the business. Thank you. 
Thank you, Kiran, and good evening, everyone. We are happy to deliver the record quarterly sales and profits at Barbecue Nation. Our operating revenues in quarter one FY23 were 315 crores, compared to 102 crores in uh, a COVID-impacted quarter of quarter one FY22. On a sequential quarter basis, we grew 25.4%, driven by growth in volume and average generation. We reported strong uh, SSLG uh, year-on-year of 182%. SSLG, as compared to the previous quarter, was 19.8%. Our dining segment has grown around 6x versus the previous year and 32% versus previous quarter. Our dining uh, to delivery mix changed in favor of dining. The absolute delivery business uh, has declined by around 6% on a sequential quarter basis. The Sano business has uh, subsequently has sequentially grown uh, by around 54% during the quarter and delivered 23% plus store margins. Uh, similarly, our international business has sequentially grown by around 24% and delivered 25% plus uh, store margins. Uh, during the quarter, we reported gross margin of 66.8%. Uh, Discretionary patients on the input costs, our calibrated price hikes and improved operating efficiencies helped us to manage gross margins better. Our reported EBITDA was 73.4 crore in quarter one FY23, delivering a healthy margin of 23.3%. Our adjusted EBITDA without the impact of India's and excluding non-cash ESOP related expenditures were 46 crore, uh, delivering 14.6% margin. Out of the total portfolio of 195 restaurants as on uh, 30th of June, around 80% restaurants are matured, uh, which is more than two years old. Uh, this matured portfolio uh, delivered annualized sales of around seven crores per outlet with store margins of 21.5%. Out of our new restaurant portfolio of 38 outlets, 24 restaurants were less than six months old and are growing well. This portfolio delivered store margins of 6.2%. Uh, both the numbers are uh, without index. Uh, as this portfolio matures, we believe this business will further improve. Our sustained, uh, we sustained our momentum in uh, network expansion and added 11 new restaurants during the quarter, taking the total network to 195 as of June 22. Uh, we have a robust under construction pipeline and a strong pipeline of working progress sites and we're progressing well towards our target of 40 restaurants in FY23. Uh, strengthening and accelerating our core dining business, uh, growth in our delivery verticals, unlocking the growth potential of Toscano and calibrated international expansion continues to be the key four vectors of our growth agenda. Uh, with this, we can now open the, uh, the session for Q&A. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. To ask a question, please press star followed by one on your touchstone phone now. We have a first question from the line of Harit Kapoor from Invest Tech Capital Services. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, good evening. Uh, so my first question is on the uh, uh, on the margin side. It's around that uh, 14 and a half percent, uh, I think adjusting for other income around 14 percent. Uh, you know, given that Q1 is a is a is, is not a very peak quarter for you, you you, you peak out in Q3, you have higher operating leverage during that time. Do you expect that full year margins could actually be a bit better than what you kind of achieved in, uh, in, in quarter one? Is that, a, is that the right way to look at it? Uh, yes, uh, Harit, uh, uh, you're right. Uh, so quarter one is sequentially not the best quarter for us. It's quarter three followed by quarter four, quarter one, and then quarter two. Uh, so with, uh, uh, with the margins that we have in uh, quarter one, uh, we should definitely uh, achieve more in, uh, in quarter, quarter three. Uh, this only caveat there would be uh, uh, would be on growth side. Uh, we are almost at a run rate of around 10 to 12 sites every quarter now. So by quarter three, uh, we would have approximately 50 sites which are less than uh, one year old. And uh, barring the drag from these on the overall margin, but our, our matured portfolio should uh, should definitely do uh, better than what we did in uh, in quarter one uh, this year. And, and can you call out the ESOP impact uh, for the quarter uh, in terms in rupees million? What what number? Uh, e video of ESOP? Yeah, the ESOP provision. Uh, you said so, there's an ESOP uh, provision. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the non-cash ESOP provisions was approximately 0.4% of uh, of top line. So approximately one and a half odd crores for the for the quarter. Okay, and that's a that's a run rate which uh, is expected to continue. Right? Yes. Yes. Got it. Got it. Uh, 
the the second question was on the uh, on the demand side so you know uh, one would expect that there would have been a pent up kind of a uh, you know you know benefit post the third wave and you would have been the beneficiary of that i just wanted to know you know as the quarter ended did you see similar kind of you know or or even into july have you seen kind of similar strong trends in terms of uh, occupancies etc this is definitely improving uh, if you look at uh, sequential quarter growth uh, obviously quarter uh, four last year was impacted by omicron wave in january uh, but if you look at the 25% growth that we did on a sequential basis around uh, 19% of this has come from just the volume increase between quarter four and quarter uh, uh, quarter one uh, this year uh, but despite this uh, while this is improving uh, 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 we also have uh, still uh, an opportunity to increase our overall covers by Uh, by 10%. So what I mean by this is uh, the average cover that we used to do, uh, or average term that we used to do pre-COVID versus now, there is still a gap of 10%, which is an opportunity that we still see uh, in our uh, in our business uh, going forward. Uh, the only thing is that quarter two is uh, unfortunately uh, a weakest quarter. Uh, this has you know, things like uh, Shravan, Shraad, uh, even uh, you know Durga Puja, uh, uh, Navratra is all in this quarter. Uh, this is actually not good for non-veg consumption uh, in the uh, in India, and that impacts us definitely. Right, right, of course, of course. So you're saying that uh, from a from a, a table turn perspective, you 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 are uh, your average of 1.8, 1.9 is about 10% lower right now, and you have that gap yet to make yes. up. Yes, we still have 10% gap to make up uh, versus pre-COVID. Got it, got it. My last question, and I'll come back to that, was uh, on the delivery side. So. Uh, it's uh, you know it is expected that you would have seen some kind of a fall in the, on the delivery side. I just wanted to get your sense: is is this the kind of run rate that you're now kind of expecting uh, for uh, the rest of the year, or uh, uh, you know are there some uh, efforts in place to kind of you know increase the assortment of the portfolio or 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 you know uh, greater extension kitchens etc., which can drive this number up a little bit as we go through the year. Yeah, so uh, on delivery front, uh, uh, as you mentioned, uh, it's uh, declined by six percent sequentially. But uh, there are two sub components to that. Uh, one is uh, obviously our box product, which was uh, which was a key player during uh, during COVID years. And the second portion was our a la carte uh, business, which is uh, individual orders or a couple of items going in order. All this, right? So the a la carte uh, uh, segment has actually grown uh, versus last quarter also. uh in uh, in this quarter uh, but our box product uh, business has has come down a bit uh our box product obviously is a group eating uh, uh, eating product but we also seen that the increase that we saw in our dining business on a larger base was significantly higher than the uh, than the drop that we uh, saw on the box segment of delivery right so overall uh, the mix has slightly changed in favor of dining uh, my expectation is that uh, this should stabilize uh, at the current levels uh, Uh, uh what we did in quarter 1 in, in july we have done pretty much same level numbers as we did in quarter 1 uh, uh but there are a couple of interventions that we are making uh, we are uh, we are actually uh, working on a on a dedicated uh, uh, you know uh, delivery only online biryani brand uh, so uh, we are uh, we have been working on this for quite some time now and uh, i think we are at a stage wherein uh, this month we should pilot it in few locations and depending on the success we will take it up uh, you know pan india so uh you know as we always maintain that uh, at as bobby connection uh, given that we own our kitchens we own our brand we have capability to add multiple stuff and uh, biryani being one of the largest category uh, you know uh, we are experimenting something on on that front so uh i think while currently number looks stabilized but once something like that kicks in in our business uh, this number on delivery can uh, can further go higher than this great that's it from me thank you wish you all the best thank you arith Thank you. To ask a question, ladies and gentlemen, please press star followed by one on your touchstone phone now. We have next question from the line of Samir Gupta with India Info Line. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, this is uh, Percy here, Percy Pansiki. Uh, my first question is uh, this uh, plan of opening up uh, restaurants internationally. i think earlier uh, when this was discussed uh, you had mentioned that uh, you would prefer to go through the franchisee route here you would not want to put any capex in uh, international so does that plan still remain uh, can you give some idea as to what is the mode of expansion into international yes so uh, uh, we are exploring both percy uh, uh, and uh, uh, and we also we said that uh, while we will do franchise in international markets 
uh, we'll also look at a uh, couple of sites maximum uh, from our own uh, balance sheet. So as of now, we have uh, we have a pipeline of around three sites. Uh, uh, we are we don't know whether that will uh, that will completely uh, you know fructify, but uh, we may add uh, around two to three from our own balance sheet. Uh, at the same time, uh, we are also exploring uh, uh, you know franchising uh, in few of the geographies, but uh, the lead time zones these are are really very high, right? Uh, and and that's the plan on on international. But uh, one thing is, we will not go overboard uh, in terms of opening up, say, seven eight outlets uh, right now. So this year, at max, we'll do two or three outlets uh, from our own balance sheet. And uh, uh, what would be the capex per store here? So uh, this would be around uh, uh, around four crores or so. Uh, but uh, the payback periods and all are pretty much similar. If you look at uh, uh, the international business uh, it's already delivering around uh, around 10 crores of uh, uh, of average revenue and 30 percent plus uh, uh, you know uh, store margins uh, so uh, the payback period wise it's around two years which is similar to you know or slightly better than what we all see in india so we know that uh, uh, we don't want to uh, completely uh, you know add more and more given that the payback is slightly better as of now but I think a couple of years, a couple of sites in, in that market uh, uh, is just a problem. Okay. And these two, three slites you have located, uh, uh, sort of uh, shortlisted, they are all in Middle East or uh, somewhere? Right. Yeah, right now it's Middle East only. So it's not, uh, so uh, not opening up a new market. It's only where we already have the, the teams, the product, the business is set. Okay. Uh, second question is, uh, uh, did I hear you right that you mentioned that uh, basically the uh, number of bills per restaurant are 10% uh, below the optimum level, something like that you mentioned? Yes. Okay. I, I so just wanted to understand covers. because the number of people, right? Yeah. Yeah. Restaurant. Okay, so just wanted to understand uh, because this has been a completely normal uh, sort of quarter. And uh, in fact, to some extent, there has been revenge spending on these categories. That is, uh, uh, people have sort of possibly gone out more than what they normally would. So why is it that right. we are still 10% below uh, uh, the optimum level? And what would be required to bring it up to 10%? I mean, another 10%. You know, the last segment, which is still not uh, back 100% is, is corporates. Most of the IT corporates also are not fully back. Uh, so our uh, our weekday businesses, weekday lunch businesses are still slightly lower than uh, what we used to do on a pre-COVID uh, uh, business. So I, I think that's the that's the big gap. Apart from that, on the uh, uh, on the weekend side or on the on the friends and family segment side, uh, I think they are pretty much sorted there. Understood. Uh, on margins, uh, you are about 13 and a half, 14 percent margins this quarter. Uh, versus uh, our sort of target of 15, there is obviously uh, input cost inflation and you have taken some price hike. So how uh, uh, fast do you think you can come back to that 15% level with Q2 be back to that uh, since the price increases have gone through uh, during the quarter and they have not affected the full quarter of Q1, but they will affect the full quarter of Q2. So would, that, would I be right in assuming that or it would take more time? So uh, I think we should look at it for the full financial year basis. Uh, uh, quarter two uh, may not be there because of a seasonally weak quarter. Uh, uh, but uh, based on quarter three, quarter four uh, numbers that will come in, I think blended basis full year, we should be at 15% margin. Okay, so for FI23, we still have hope of uh, being 15% for the full year. Okay. And my last question on is on this new brand of biryani that you the are, uh, you are speaking with. Has to put your call on hold, please. Hello. Yeah, sorry. Hello? Uh, can you repeat your question, please? Yeah, yeah, I can hear uh, you. Uh, this biryani brand, uh, which you are uh, sort of planning to launch for delivery only, uh, can you give some thought process there? See, because uh, uh, Barbecue Nation itself is very well known for biryani. So why have a second brand here? If at all we want to do something uh, uh, with a different brand in delivery, we should be doing it in a type of cuisine where we are not already present. So uh, uh, I tend to slightly disagree here. So uh, look, Body Nation brand is more of a dining brand uh, with all you can eat, uh, you know, value offering, service driven, experience driven. 
uh, and uh, if you look at our delivery business also we largely do it under the under the UDQ brand uh, while we also have a barbecue kitchen listed but uh, UDQ brand uh, actually stands for uh, for ala carte offering on in indian uh, uh, cuisine segment uh, and uh, while we serve biryani in across uh, both these platforms these are not dedicated biryani platform and uh, uh, you know we all know that uh, biryani is one of the largest categories uh, you know in the country in, in, in delivery segment and uh, we have been obviously Uh, preparing biryani and serving biryani for, for for many years in across all our platforms so it is pretty much a natural extension in a adjacent category uh, for us uh, but uh, when you want to compete in a market uh, where there are dedicated players uh, i think that required a separate uh, uh, you know uh, brand look and feel and focus and that is why we are we are evaluating it under a new uh, brand this is uh, very much under a pilot stage right now and if things go well hopefully we'll plan to launch a uh, few in few markets uh, in this month itself and uh, you know uh, very early stage so i think let's uh, let's see how it goes and then maybe uh, uh, we'll update on how this is performing okay sir that's all from me thanks and all the best thank you basit thanks thank you anyone who wishes to ask a question at this time may press star and 1 on your touchstone phone now We have a next question from the line of Vijay Patra with uh, an investor please go ahead. Yeah. I thank you for your management as in the staff. I am a fond of Babiju Nation since the last 10 years when it was opened first in Pune. What I suggest because first thing you can open more outlets in particular metro center one and increase your revenue automatically you will get the profit. and automatically everything will come because the staffs are excellent and it shows the your hr policy is good and very at good atmosphere and it is excellent that is why as a individual i can say the but i feel to increase more profit or i am saying increase the outlets because very few outlets are there in cities is better you can rapidly expand that will be ideal to increase the revenue everything i hope you will do that thank you thank you sir uh, thanks for the comment uh, about our team uh, thank you and uh, regarding increasing the uh, the number of outlets uh, we are geared to to do that and planning to add uh, up to 300 in the next couple of years sir thank you sir okay. wish you all the best it is excellent i thank appreciate you. this one i love it Thank you, sir. We have next question from the line of Vicky Punjabi with UTI Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi Rahul. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, just one, uh, just just on back to that uh, the, to 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 the biryani outlet, a uh, biryani brand launch. I wanted to understand, uh, you know, if these get served from the same kitchens, how much of spare capacity do we really have in terms of scaling up? and uh uh i mean uh, just to understand i mean uh, it seems like there will be no incremental cost at least for the launch of this brand it will be largely from i mean my understanding is it will be largely from the same kitchen and uh, uh it it gives us a better leverage in terms of uh, uh, enhancing throughput Yes. Uh, so, uh, um, when you say uh, capacity, uh, do you mean uh, space in the kitchens or Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, uh, can I mean it, it's it's about turnover that a kitchen can kind of support, right? So, uh, uh, how much of turnover can can get supported by uh, the current kitchens is, is what I'm trying to understand. Yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, since uh, uh, since last two years, whatever new restaurants we are creating, we are having a dedicated space for our delivery operations inside the uh inside the barbecue kitchen uh, outlet so it's pretty much uh, in a very crude manner uh, shop and shop kind of uh, model and uh, we are doing our uh, our ubq operations today from from the same setup right and when we designed it earlier we also designed it with the flexibility that uh, tomorrow we can add uh, some dedicated machines and also put it and serve it uh, so uh, i think uh, in some cases obviously we have to create some space but uh, by and large uh, uh, we are also launching in those places where we have that and uh, we have not seen uh, 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 we don't expect also uh, that place to be uh, to be congested 
uh, also uh, uh, while doing the research for this particular brand, we also obviously upgraded uh, the overall uh, brand experience both in the outlet, also in UBK, and also for uh, for this stuff, uh, for this new uh, uh, brand that we are contemplating. Uh, so we don't see that, and uh, overall, I think uh, uh, with this new uh, sort of uh, setup and category. Uh, we expect that uh, that the incremental revenues and and, and profits uh, should be uh, should have pretty much the same dynamic as we had when we when we did our uh, uh, UBQ launch uh, from our outlets. Okay, okay, and and uh, uh, on this this cloud kitchen where we are seeing you know some kind of uh, uh, problems coming in, which is which is more like now uh, 15 stores count as where where we are uh, kind of stabilizing at. Uh, you know, what a what a kind of success out in, in, in biryani segment, uh, would that lead to uh, incremental growth in that that segment as well? Or uh, uh, this is more looking, I mean, we are looking more, I mean, we're looking at this more from the leveraging of the current kitchen space only. No, so, uh, uh, Vicky, I think uh, let's look at the four vectors of our growth. And, uh, uh, you know, apart from Barbecue India, Toscano International, biryani one of the key segments of our growth. Uh, and uh, and we are we are very focused on this segment, right? Uh, we have done I think very well over the last uh, three years. Uh, this year, some of the immediate COVID-related push that we got on our delivery, uh, we have seen uh, sequentially coming down, right? Uh, and uh, and uh, you know that doesn't mean that uh, we don't believe in this space or we don't believe in the growth opportunity of this space. Uh, this is something that uh, we have been working on for last uh, six eight months. Uh, this is something that uh, uh, our, our philosophy is that how can you make uh, uh, delivery as at least 20% of your overall business and then uh, what is the thing that you can leverage to do that. We launched Extension Kitchen from the same perspective. Uh, when Extension Kitchen launched uh, versus now, obviously the average daily sales uh, from uh, delivery segment has come down. Uh, and I've always maintained that Extension Kitchens will, also, will only start making sense uh, once the once there is the average revenue per outlet goes up to a particular threshold, so that's why you notice in this quarter we have not added any extension kitchens. Uh, uh, the focus first is to increase average daily sales from the existing network, which is now close to 195. Uh, once this goes up and individually uh, this can uh, sustain an extension kitchen also, then maybe adding more extension kitchen is not a problem, right? Uh, so immediate focus is that uh, don't worry about extension kitchen. Uh, uh, try and increase the throughput of delivery per outlet. And once you do that, then uh, you know your delivery will anyway uh, be taken care of also by adding more capacity from extension kitchen. So that is the that is the broad thinking we have on on this entire thing. Uh, this quarter, for example, I think the focus of the team would be to stabilize this new uh, stuff that we are piloting in few places. You know, this may take uh, you know three to six months. And then once uh, once the basic number is achieved and uh, and the extension vision model uh, is uh, uh, is profitable at that uh, at a double digit number at least, uh, that is when you push the escalator on the extension vision side. Oh, sure, thanks. Uh, just one thing, I I think I missed this. Uh, what's the guidance for Capex and uh, Store Edition? So we have guided for around uh, 35 to 40 outlets. Uh, as of today, uh, we launched down net 10 outlets this quarter. A uh, very strong pipeline of 15 under construction sites, uh, which are already, uh, you know, the ground business is done. And uh, there are 15 sites wherein uh, we have come, finalized the commercials, uh, they are in various stages of diligence. So uh, today we have complete visibility of the 40 sites that we are planning to open this financial year. Uh, I think we still have uh, around, uh, around eight months to go for the year. Uh, depending on how the new pipeline gets built up over the next couple of, uh, uh, couple of quarters, uh, we may have uh, we may have to revise the uh, uh, you know the number of sites maybe upwards in the next quarter, but as of now on the 40 sites are overall uh, capex uh, including uh, uh, you know maintenance capex some other stuff that you might uh, 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 capex stuff that you might do for uh, for the biryani stuff uh, we may be at uh, at a capex of around 130 to 140 crores. Okay, sure. Th thank you. Thank you so much. That's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you, Vicky. Thank you. We have next question from the line of Samir Gupta from India Info Line. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Am I audible? Yes. Hello. Yeah. Uh, so just a question on the sales per store, uh, which I think this quarter you have done about 6.6 uh, .6 crore uh, sales per store. Uh, 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 time was that... Uh, 
uh, dine in itself uh, should get a six crore and then uh, one crore on top of that should be uh, delivery so we would be doing about seven crore so is that a sort of fair uh, thought process to go with uh, uh, even today after seeing some amount of cannibalization between dine in and uh, 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 sort of delivery and in this analysis let us keep this new biryani launch uh, aside whatever comes from that will be over and above that but given the uh, demand situation right now for the full year fi23 what kind of uh, sales per store do we feel confident delivering so uh, i think uh, uh, 7 crore is a uh, is a decent number to to work with uh, if you look at our matured portfolio we have done around uh, 7 crores there uh, by analyzing the performance of quarter 1 and uh, uh, our historical numbers in quarter 1 and quarter 2 put together is is not uh, strictly uh, you know the uh, representation of the full year uh, in the extra business uh, second half is always better Uh, given their festive seasons, New Year, and other stuff uh, that comes there, so just on the matured portfolio, I think uh, uh, based on the current numbers, we should cross uh, uh, cross seven crores, uh, which is what we are, uh, which is uh, you know uh, what we are currently witnessing in both our buying and uh, delivery segment put together, right? Without the new initiative, uh, our new portfolio, new restaurant portfolio is is right now actually very young, right? Uh, if you remember uh, the real uh, increase in our in our pipeline or uh, increase in our stores started coming from uh, second half of last year so out of the 38 sites uh, as i mentioned in my commentary also around 24 sites are less than 6 months old uh, so uh, in those outlets also uh, you know the margins are just about break even we normally take on 3 to 4 months to start uh, you know breaking even right so that's what impacting the the overall uh, 16.6 and, and and the margins uh, where they are Uh, so on the uh, as these these matures, I'm pretty confident that uh, uh, that our revenue uh, and margin numbers uh, should be seven crore plus and at least twenty one twenty two percent range at store level. Understood, understood. But given the fact that at any point of time in future we will always have uh, some stores which are new and in ramp up mode. So if I include them in the average. Uh, what would be a correct number to go along with for uh, fi 23 24 about 6 uh, and a half crore would be a fair number to go along with that uh no look uh, in the current quarter itself uh, we have done around 6.65 right and uh, uh, yeah. like i'm saying this is not the representation of full year so uh, i think uh, uh, by my internal assessment would be to at least reach 7 And uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, our covers on pre-COVID versus now, uh, we still see an opportunity of 10%. So we have to go out in the market and capture that. Uh, our mm-hmm. delivery business is obviously not uh, uh, this is not the best quarter for delivery. We have done better than this in the past also. Uh, so that is something that we'll try and regain. And the third is you know new initiatives that we're trying from our outlets, right? Uh, so mix of all, at least on top line basis, uh, if we are 6.65 on average in the current uh, uh, you know quarter, uh, my sense is this should definitely be uh, around seven. That is what we should we should target. Understood, understood. So you don't think that there is any element of uh, some revenge spending this quarter in the sense that uh, people going out more often and with more uh, frequency than they would normally go out just because uh, they are getting a chance for the first time after two years that phenomenon is not there in the this quarter numbers is it uh, i uh, i don't think so look because uh, if you look at our uh, last five quarters numbers uh, you know i think we have always our recovery on dining segment has always been been very good right so i am not seeing any exceptional Uh, performance on our dining business, you know, this quarter. Uh, from from my perspective, you know, uh, we are we are still uh, the number that we are tracking is why are we still lower than lower by ten percent from from these going numbers and how do we get our that volume back? So so that is the number that at least we are trying internally. Understood, understood. Very clear. Thank you and all this. Thank you, Sumit. Thank you. Thank you. Participants to ask a question, please press star followed by one on your touchdown phone now. We have next question from the line of Praful Siddharth with Shavas Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. I'm audible. Yes, Praful. 
Yeah, so, so my question is, how are you planning to tackle competition from the likes of Absolute Barbecue? Because based on my understanding, customers look out for two things. One is low price, the second is the huge spread. So how are you planning to tackle this competition? So uh, the competition has always been there. Uh, uh, you know, out of, we would be around, uh, in India, around 145 plus outlets. Uh, we did one analysis earlier and we found that there are almost uh, 100, 120 uh, another uh, similar formats have copied uh, the concept. Uh, this is not a new phenomena. Uh, we have been seeing this uh, for almost 10 years. Uh, I think uh, uh, one, uh, we continue to focus on uh, uh, on our guest experience and our varieties, and uh, uh, we are very happy with the performance that we have uh, we have delivered over the last uh, you know so many years on a consistent basis, despite being at uh, at such a high base. Uh, my sense is that uh, this competition uh, will keep on coming and going. Uh, and also, uh, you know, uh, just having seen so many businesses, I don't see any business where there is no competition, right? Uh, so, uh, nothing that that really worries us in terms of in terms of competition. Right. So, it's oh, yeah. and it's always always in India. Got it, got it. So my next question is, so I just wanted to understand this biryani brand better because biryani is something which is, you know, it differs a lot from state to state. So how are you planning to like bring this biryani brand out to the market? Would it be like standardized or would it be customized from state to state? So how are you planning to go about this? So as I said, this is in a very pilot stage. So uh, there is uh, uh, nothing more that we can add right now. Uh, this is still working progress. Uh, this is something that uh, that uh, we are launching in uh, in very select markets right now, and uh, as we as we launch it, as the feedback, uh, we'll keep uh, updating the uh, you know to the market uh, appropriately. Got it. Got it. Last question: uh, Is it possible to give us a measure on the employee attrition rate if that's really available with you? Uh, so it is uh, it is usual then uh, 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 it's higher than the usual number that we used to do. Uh, I don't have exact number right now for you, but uh, uh, that's one area where uh, uh, we were seeing increased rate, and that's uh, uh, that reason is multiple. Uh, in the in the hotel industry, uh, you know, during the COVID times, a lot of international hires, cruise lines, they were not uh, not hiring. So those avenues are opened up for for a lot of um, uh, a lot of people. Uh, then a lot of other new, uh, slowly and slowly more capacities are coming up. So uh, as people are uh, reopening, they're building up their teams. Uh, you know, some people uh, obviously are leaving. Uh, so right now it's higher than uh, than what we used to do usually uh, before COVID. Uh, but nothing alarming. So uh, does it uh, does it worry us? No. Uh, there is uh, uh, there is some high spike, but uh, definitely manageable. And and that's the reason why you know uh, uh, we are also being able to. Uh, to hire more people and also open up more outlets that we're doing right now. Got it, got it. That's it from end. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you. To ask your question, ladies and gentlemen, please press star followed by one on your touchdown phone now. We have next question from the line of Vidisha Sheth with Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, hi. Uh, so I just wanted to know what would be the quantum of investment on uh, the incremental acquisition that we're making in Toscano and the international business? So on, on, on Toscano business, uh, we would uh, invest approximately seven crores, uh, seven to eight crores. Uh, and uh, in international business, uh, this is a local partner. Uh, uh, in international business, the business, the local business has to be partly owned by the local partner. Uh, there may uh, there is some rule change wherein uh, the foreign entities are now allowed to uh, uh, to own 100% uh, uh, of of the business, and, and we're trying to. Uh, to work with our local uh, you know, agencies to see whether we can own it fully. Uh, there, uh, I think the outflow is, is going to be uh, to be low, uh, more around good value or something, but uh, that still needs to be uh, uh, to be crystallized. Okay, okay. And uh, what would be the current margins that our delivery business is generating? Sorry, which business? The uh, delivery business. Uh, so, Vinisha, like I said uh, earlier, the uh, the delivery business, uh, you know, PNL we don't make separately because it's all done from the same infrastructure, right? Uh, from the same outlets. Uh, so, uh, delivery business uh, gross margin or uh, is slightly lower. Uh, uh, the food cost, packaging cost, delivery commissions all put together, uh, you know, we add up between uh, between 65 to 70 percent. 
and the balance cost is all actually fixed. Uh, so, for example, rental employees, all of them are are, are charged to the particular unit as such, right, and not uh, appropriated uh, differently. But um, you know, our math is that uh, the margins are pretty much similar, which is around 20 to 22 percent on the delivery segment also. So that doesn't that doesn't change because the high the large portion of the delivery costs are are actually variable. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vishal. Thank you. We have next question from the lineup. Varun Pratap Singh with IDBI Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity. I just wanted to check uh, if we have taken any price hike during the uh, uh, during this quarter. Yeah, so um, we had taken around uh, uh, around four to five percent price hike uh, in the uh, in the current quarter, which was uh, actually taken uh, uh, in the month of uh, April and and May, spread across the two two months. Post that, we are not taking any price hike. So, uh, sorry, when you said this quarter, you meant quarter one, right? Yes, yes, correct, correct. Yeah, yeah. So we mentioned about that in the previous call also. That post that we are not taking any price hike. Okay, sure, sure. And sir, uh, if you can give some color on the store that uh, we have closed during the quarter. So we have closed one outlet in a tier uh, 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 tier two city, uh, and then they also added one outlet in tier two city. That's why the number came. Uh, so that outlet uh, uh, was uh, doing low uh, average uh, sales uh, uh, in a month and uh, was bleeding. Uh, we had to mention in the past also uh, with respect to these kind of outlet, and I think uh, you know historically we have not closed outlets, but uh, you know today the amount of bandwidth that it takes is just way too much. So that's why we decided to just uh, move out uh, of that market and and enter into a new adjacent market. Right, and sir, uh, sir, this would be a uh, barbecue nation uh, restaurant only, no? Yes, yes, this is barbecue nation. Right, and uh, sir, roughly how uh, how old uh, uh, this uh, store uh, would be, sir? I mean, one year, the one that we have closed. Yes. So the one, the one that we have closed would be uh, around uh, around three to four years old. So we opened up before COVID, and then there was you know obviously COVID impact, and then post that now we realize that it is. Uh, it's taking the way too much bandwidth. Sure, sure. Okay, okay, sir. That's it from my side. Thank you very much. Thank you, Varun. Thank you. A reminder to participants, if you wish to ask a question, please press star followed by one on your touchstone phone now. We have next question from the line of Shreya Lunkar with Motila Loswal AMC. Please go ahead. Uh, Mr. Shreel Lunkar, your line is unmuted. Please go ahead and ask your question. Yeah, hi Rahul, am I audible? You are, sir. Please go ahead. Yes. Hi, sir. Uh, hi. Uh, so Rahul, just if you can just throw some light on the cash flow conversion for the quarter, um, that would be just helpful. Yes. Yeah, so uh, during the quarter, we had uh, uh, cash profits of approximately 40 crores. Uh, our India's EBITDA was around 46 or so. Uh, out of that uh, 40 crores, uh, we have done incremental capex of uh, around 37 crores, uh, and 3 crore is the net increase in our cash balance. Uh, our net cash uh, at the end of last quarter was around 63 crores. Uh, out of that 63 crores, around uh, around 85 crores was cash in books, and 22 crores was net debt that one time. Uh, today, that net cash has gone up from 63 crores to 66 uh, odd crores, so incremental 3 crores. And uh, on the CAPEX side, 37 crore CAPEX that we have done, uh, we have spent uh, around uh, 3 crores on maintenance CAPEX and around uh, 34 crores on uh, new sites. Uh, the new sites include around 11 new restaurants and one uh, one renovation that we have done of the existing uh, of, not renovation, so same site, just renovated uh, the store. Uh, so this CAPEX would be for around 12 outlets. So overall, uh, that's the broad uh, cash flow. Uh, I think. Sure. And uh, and as we speak, uh, how are the inflation trends on our COGS? So we have seen some, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, decline in some of these uh, these prices. Uh, also, like I said, this is seasonally weak quarter from uh, from the meat perspective, right? So some of these prices are slightly better for us. Uh, we also are working with uh, uh, with contracted vendors. So some of these contracts that we have long term contracts, they have or here we take this into account, right? 
but uh, i'm not seeing uh, uh, seeing any significant risk to uh, to our gross margin that we have uh, reported in the current quarter and should continue maybe at this level sure and just uh, one question that uh, that dubai subsidiary that we are planning to acquire 51% for which you are saying the consideration is not yet frozen but as we speak is it consolidated line by line or is it treated as an associate no it's consolidated line by line okay great thank you thank, thank you. you anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on your touch tone phone now Yes, there are no further questions from the participants. I now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Thank you all. Thanks for uh, joining the call. And uh, if there are any further queries, we are always available. <laughs> Thank you, Ambit team, for organizing this. Thank you. Thank you very much, members of the management. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Ambit Capital, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining with us, and you may now disconnect your lines. <laughs>